Now, today's fail is something that I myself am totally guilty of. Most blondes, at least once in their life, decide that they want to be a brunette. I see this happen all the time where a collar will be put on top of a blonde and it goes green or blue or gray and that is exactly what happened to Sonder. So we are going to watch her process together and see if we can't help her out a little bit. If you have never seen my face before, welcome. My name is Shannon. I am a hairstylist out of rural Midwest Illinois. I've been in the industry since 2008 and I also hold an applied science degree in the field. In this series, I have selected five DIY fails to decode. Each fail will get its own episode, and all of these scenarios are very common things that happen when coloring hair. Last week, we met Jess, who tried to give herself an ombre, and her roots went blonde and her ends stayed dark. To figure out what went wrong there, you can click the link below. So let's go ahead and see what kind of fun Sondra can get into. Hey y'all, I'm done with Halloween and I'm ready to have my hair be more of a fall winter color. I am going to be putting in my natural hair color and spreading it throughout. I got a lot of hours of sleep last night. Halloween was insane. It's one of the five A cooler tones, and so this will accentuate your natural tones. <laughs> So when you deposit artificial color into your hair, the end tone will always be a combination of what was added artificially and what was already there. When you are lifting or lightening hair, the story gets a little bit more complicated because then you have to deal with exposure of the hair's natural undertones. However, with just depositing color or going darker, you don't have to worry about undertone exposure. You really only need to look at what the hair is reflecting currently. In her case, she is pretty much white blonde. So anything she puts on top will not have anything to stand up against. It will only reflect that artificial color. It is cute. People work really hard to get that color actually. Okay, so let's dive into this just a little bit more. The base of hair color is typically curated in one of two ways. Either equal parts of all three primary colors, which will give you a gray base, or that standard calibrated triangle that we all learn in beauty school, which is three parts yellow, which is our weakest color, two parts red, and one part blue, which is our strongest color. And those all combined make a balanced brown. And then the desired tone is added into that base. Since she picked an ash color, that means that there would have been added blue, green, violet, or a combination of those cooler dyes. This can be kind of tricky when formulating. The color line that I use in the salon tells me whether the base of the hair color is a gray base or brown base, and then it also tells me the tone that was added in. But it's not that easy with all hair colors, professional or otherwise. Now, I am not familiar with this company's formulation. I also don't know if it was an acidic or alkaline color, and I don't know what volume of developer was used. However, even if it was the right pH and was the right volume of developer, it wouldn't have really changed the final result. The formula choice was the main culprit here. And even if the color formula was a balanced brown, remember, she did not start with a balanced canvas. She was missing all warmth to begin with, so her end result was also going to fall short on the warmth, unless she were to purposefully add warmth in to compensate. In the salon, if I have somebody going darker who wants an ashy end result, I may not even use anything close to an ashy color to get there. You really have to know what you're starting with and what you're adding to know where you're going to end up. Another rule of thumb is that you never want to darken more than two levels at a time. This will avoid hollow or dull looking color and gives you an opportunity to fill in that missing warmth as you go. 
she jumped a whole five levels. She went from a level 10 to a level five. So that might be the reason why her color is lacking a little bit of depth. She did figure this out and tries again, so let's watch that. I did a study. <laughs> I looked it up and guess what, y'all? You cannot go back to a darker color without putting in some other kind of red or orange tones. You need some kind of orange or some kind of thing for it to grip onto. You need protein back in your hair, especially after you're stripping them to platinum blonde. You're gonna have all of that protein knocked out of your hair. Now I'm going to be putting in a 5N, which hopefully goes to the level I want to this time. I've done a little studying. It's gonna work. I know it will. Closely I got to the box color. Here's the box color. Okay, so now she is comparing her end result with the color that she originally intended it to be. Notice she originally intended it to be a 5A, 5 ash. To get that color though, she used red and a neutral. So like I said before, just because you want an ash as an end result does not mean that you're going to necessarily put ash in your formula. It really all does depend where you're starting from. If you think this girl looks familiar, you may have seen her on this video. That's awesome. that part wasn't. It literally gives me butterflies. Do you remember seeing her like go, she went viral on Facebook? This was that girl. If you're like, she looks familiar. That's probably where you saw her. So what was your big aha moment out of this video? I would love to know your number one takeaway, something you learned. Leave it down in the comments for me. Congratulations, you made it all the way through the end of the video. If you did, let me know down below because that's a huge deal. To celebrate, I'm going to share another random fact about myself. I lived on a church camp for about five years. It had the whole nine yards, cabins, woods, pool, rock wall, and all summer long we would host different weeks of church camp by age. So I always had kids around me, there was always something going on. We did not own the church camp, the member churches all contributed to its existence. We just directed the church camp so we got to live on site and kind of oversee everything. So there is another little random fact about myself that you might not know. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and we'll chat later. Bye!